here we have the Avid MTRX Studio. Now, first thing I'll start with this doing this video is you cannot get hold of these for love nor money. You literally cannot get hold of them. I have been trying to get hold of one for about six months. My mate just recently sold me this, which is brilliant. I mean, I've got one, I don't know if you can see it, down there, and I use it in this studio. Now, I've just got a new Atmos studio, which I wanted to hook up as well with this. Now, here's the, here's the thing, is because they're so hard to get hold of at the moment, and you cannot get one new at the moment, um, I, I, I haven't even been quoted when I could have got a new one. It was just like, yeah, we'll let you know kind of thing. Um, I was looking at buying the larger MTRX2. Now that, for what I actually needed, come in at about £18,000, uh, maybe a bit more. Actually, it came in at like 21 because I wanted to put two mic pre's into it as well. So it was going to come in at something like 21,000, which when you consider what I'm using this for. Now, what I'm using this for is just for my monitoring out. Now, this is a really, really good interface for um, Dolby Atmos. It has the SPQ built into it so you can tune your room. Now, I don't personally use the SPQ on this because I use the, the Trinov uh, to tune my room. But what you have here is essentially an excellent interface for Dolby Atmos. Now, what I use it for is just my outputs. Uh, so using these line outs here. I will use in this room, I'm running 9.1.4 uh, with two subs. Um, so I think I'm running about 14, um, maybe, no, 15 speakers, I think, in this room. So this is perfect for a 9.1.4. Um, 12 channels using 7.1.4, perfect for that as well. So I fitted, I've got this one to fit into my other Atmos Studio. And before I fit it, I figured I'd do a quick review on it and tell you my thoughts on it. As someone that uses it every day, and like I say, I'm only using the line outs on this um, to my speakers. And I can tell you now, the, the quality coming out of these to my speakers is incredible. It is brilliant. Now, as I said before, I was looking at the MTRX2. Now, the MTRX2 21,000. What was I actually gaining? The only thing I'm using is the line outs for my monitors, and I might get a tiny, tiny bit of difference from the line outs on this compared to the converters in the MTRX2. 21 grand's worth of difference? No, probably not. I can guarantee you, no. Um, so what this gives me is an all round everything. It gives me great conversion. It gives me two good preamps and they are good preamps. I've recorded a few things for them and they are good preamps. Um, on the back, you literally have every connection bar MADI and AES. Um, I don't know where they would have fitted them. So, I mean, what they've given you is a good amount of connections um, on the back. I mean, what they could have done was, I, which they're not going to, I mean, it's it's avid at the end of the day, is done away with these, um, the uh, port one and two uh, for the HDX, which I use because I hook mine up with the, um, with the HD native box, but, now they've introduced Thunderbolt, which I'm told is coming, you're going to be able to get hold of that in a couple of months, I reckon. Um, so now with the Thunderbolt card, we can connect directly straight to Pro Tools, to the computer, and connect over Thunderbolt, which is brilliant. And, and as soon as those cards come available, I'm fitting one into both of mine. Now... Connection wise, if you are not using ports one and two to hook it up over HDX, you're going to want to hook it up over Dante using Dante Virtual Sound Card or a sound card of your choosing a Dante card. Problem with Dante Virtual Sound Card 
is you are limited at 48K, you are limited to 64 channels in, 64 channels out, um, which is cool, but if you're using it for Dolby Atmos, you can't use all 128 channels over um, Dante Virtual Soundcard. I might be wrong, but that's that was my finding. At 96K, which is what we're always mixing in, you're limited to 32 channels in, 32 channels out, which quite honestly isn't enough. So you are gonna wanna connect it, if you're using this, you are gonna wanna connect it over the HD native ports, or you're gonna wanna connect it over the optional Thunderbolt card, which is about 800 pounds. So it's it's not cheap and it's it's quite an expensive card, but it is gonna give you 128 channels over that Thunderbolt um, for Atmos. So you're gonna get 20, 128 channels over, um, out of the render and into the renderer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you've got 16 line inputs. I, it is literally everything's on there. I mean, you 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 can't ask for much more from an interface. I've not, I've not found anything that I've gone, oh, I wish it had this. The only thing I would say that I wish it had, um, because I connect my bowl converters to it, is I wish it had AES. Maybe stick the AES in there um, instead. Um, I do wish it had AES. The how I connect my um, how I connect AES to this is I have a AES to Dante converter, which basically then hooks up over the Dante network and gives me AES straight to my bell converters. Um, now, what more is there to say? I tell you, I tell you actually. Um, the, the software that comes with it is Dadman. And to be honest, it's not the most friendly of software. You will need to get your head around it. Once you do, and once you get something stable, um, it's, it's going to work very well. But it's very difficult to get your head around at first. It seems, it seems kind of clunky. But it's good. It, it, it is good once you've once you've kind of worked with it a little while, and once you've got it set up. Let's face it. Once you've got everything set up, it is set up, ready to go, and you're not really going to need to touch it. Um, also worth mentioning, two headphone slots on the front. I don't use the headphone slots on the front. I use the the monitor out on the back, um, and I then run that to my headphone amp, and then I use a Rupert Neve headphone amp as well. Um, so I tend, I tend not to use these two headphone slots. So technically speaking, I've got four four headphone outputs on this. Uh, also on the front, you've got a line uh, instrument in uh, one and two, um, as well as mic lines, uh, mic inputs on the back. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, experience wise with it, yeah, it's good. I've I've not had any problems with it, to be honest. I've I've put it in. I've had it in for now oh, about nearly two years. I've had this at my studio, so I've had it in for quite a bit of time, and I've not yeah I've not experienced any problems with it. The other good thing to mention with it is that the with using Dadman you can use the Avid S4 or the Avid um, Dock. Um, to basically hook up the monitor control. <coughs> so your monitor controller here is directly controlled off of the S, uh, the dock or the master console on the S4. So yeah, all in all, I would say this is a really, really good interface that has every connection you will need um, at a reasonable price. They're 4,800, which is expensive, but it's avid at the end of the day. And it's a lot like Apple. They kind of throw a couple of grand on top, but you are getting a good interface. You know, you are getting something that is really good and is gonna last you a long time. Um, and it's brilliant that they've now added the Thunderbolt option card. Um, I think it should person. I personally think it should come as standard with with a Thunderbolt card. But I, I like the I like the fact that it is an option because some people don't want to use the Thunderbolt card. Now, why should they pay an extra eight hundred pound on top of it for the list price? <coughs> 
when it could be an option. Um, so yeah, all in all, very good interface. Um, I mean, I, I own two of them and they interface both of my Atmos studios. <coughs> so yeah, highly recommend it. Really good interface.